Okay, so today we're talking about matrices, and uh, it's basically a matrix is just a set of numbers that you put in a rectangle. And you, you order a lot of things in real life in rectangles, if you think about it. Look at your rows right now. Okay, yeah, uh, rows and columns. And uh, and I don't like to use the example in the classroom for rows and columns uh, in a matrix. I got some better examples for you, but uh, these little things that are inside the matrix are called elements. Elements. So the 2 is an element, the A is an element. How many elements do I have? 4. If I wanted to say what position the negative 8 is in, yeah, bottom right is a natural reaction, but there's a math way to say it. And we always say the row first and then the column. You need to get used to that because when these matrix problems get complicated, it usually is because you're not doing it in an orderly way. They're very orderly. The computers are, think this way. They store data in sets of numbers like this. We'll talk about the binary system at some point later this year. All right. So uh, that 8, negative 8, is actually in row 2, column 2. And that's the way, the way you'd say its official position. All right. Let's talk about rows versus columns. Uh, columns, you, you can see this one over here first. Uh, pretty jumps out at you, those columns. You know what that building is? That's the White House, that's right. And uh, columns have been used for a long time. I looked up some other old pictures uh, of columns. Greeks were famous for their columns. Uh, basically, columns, if you just remember, columns go up and down, like columns do, then rows must go the other way. But let's talk about rows in the baseball context because we got that brand new stadium that's just coming online here. Uh, and the Twins are uh, pretty excited. I, I'm pretty excited about it. How many of you guys are expecting to go to a game sometime this summer, maybe? All right, good. Um, and it doesn't have to be that expensive. It can be. But out in the outfield, uh, you can get seats for 20 bucks, and on special nights, they'll even be cheaper. But kind of your standard price, if you click out in the outfield here, oh, it's going to even show me where those, what the view would be from those seats. That would be section 140, rows 1 through 7. So if you were in those seats in the outfield, that's what it would look like kind of cool to be able to, to like get that 3D kind of feeling. All right, so as I'm looking at these go past, notice that we don't ever say, what column are you sitting in? It's what section are you sitting in? They, they say section instead of column. But they still do rows like we'd want them to. You know, they go across or horizontally. And so what row are you in still makes sense. They have a charge for the very first row. They have a $5 upcharge for any first row seat. This, all the seats are the same in price, except the very first row, row one of any section, has to pay 5 bucks more because they basically have really good seats because they're not obstructed by anybody. The bad part is, I suppose, that people might be walking past you. So, Anyway, uh, this is kind of cool. Let's, let's go and look at a different view, a different place in the stadium. Um, probably right behind home plate is probably the best spot of all, I'd imagine. Um, so let's click on that section. Uh, it says full season, $175 seats. So this is what you get for 175 bucks. See the buildings in the background there? You can see the Twin Cities skyline from there. That's kind of cool. So anyway, just wanted to talk about rows since they obviously use this terminology in baseball. Uh, and columns, I'd prefer you just think about those pictures. And remember, the easiest way on the columns is, if you just remember columns go up and down, the rows must go the other way. Now, why is that so important? Well, when we name the matrices, we have to know their uh, the official name for each uh, matrix. Like, this dimensions of this are two by two, and you really can't mess it up because you can't tell if I said rows first and then columns or not because they're both two, right? But this one isn't two by two. It's either one by three or three by one, and... Only one of those is right. Always do the rows first. Write that in your notes, please. Always rows, then columns. you got to get that R first and then C because there's pretty soon it's just going to be numbers. And if you're saying it's in, in like the third 3R313, you can get really confused. All right, so anyway, of if I'm doing rows first, the rows go across like this. Okay, so I like to like hold my hand up and say, okay, I got, let's see, one, 
two, three. I got to count them this way. So I'm going one row, and then my columns is three. So one by three. Okay. So is this one? How many rows in this one? So it's one by three, not three by one. How about this one? How many rows? I'm moving my hand across. Two by three. So that's a two by three matrix. All right. Next thing you got to know is that. Oh, there's some real-world uses. Why would we ever care about these things? Well, you see matrices in a lot of places, like the seating chart you're in right now. We talked about that before. Your monthly schedule. If I, if I were to pull up a calendar, uh, and I did in my other hours, but I frankly don't want to record my whole calendar in front of everybody on the Internet. So I'm going to go like this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that's just a work week. You see how that's kind of like columns? And then if I have on my Monday, I have different hours laid out. Mostly in a business schedule, you're probably working from, well, at school, it's probably from 8 to 4, something like that. And if this hour is blocked in or whatever, that's kind of like an element in a matrix. So what kind of a matrix would this be? Well, if it's a 9-hour day, or sorry, 8-hour day, um, then this is, what do we do first again? Rows or columns or which? Rows. How many rows? If you do your hand across like this, how many rows would there be? Okay, now I have six in my picture, which is so many ways, some of you guys are saying six, but if it's a nine hour day, you'd have nine of those there. Get that? So that would be nine by what? Five. You ever heard of the term 24 7? It's in perfect order. Think about it. 24, what are those? Hours. By the columns is what? Seven days a week. Get it? 24-7 works perfect for this. It's a matrix. All right. Uh, what if we want to do the whole year and all the hours? What would it be? 24. 24 hours in the day. How many days? 365. Yep. So 24 by 365 would work for that. All right, next thing let's talk about is triangles. This triangle uh, is has got all of its points recorded in a matrix. It's right here. It doesn't have any lines on it, but now it does. Okay, and you can see these are sets of two like this. So that means negative 5, 3 is one of my points, etc. So I got my three points from that make my triangle. Well, one of the nice parts is that they are lined up well so that if I wanted to, like, say, these guys are all the same, and they're all what's? Those are all x's. Good. And then the other ones are all the same. Those are all my y's. So if I want to play around with this thing and, like, stretch it horizontally or vertically, like if I wanted to make it stretch wider, is that x stuff or is that y stuff? Wider. Wider is the x stuff. Okay, so that would mess with these numbers. And if I wanted to make them all wider, like twice as wide... Just double them all. So I would have negative 10, 4, and negative 8. And then notice the 3 and the 6 and the negative 2 all stay the same. And if I graph those points, it'll be twice as wide. All right. Uh, translating it just means moving it. And instead of multiplying then, what do I do? You subtract or add. So if I want to move this thing to the right, then I'm only going to mess with my x numbers. And I'm going to add something. Let's say I want to move 3 to the right. I add 3 to all of them. Notice it's not counterintuitive, okay? Because this is not an equation or a function like we studied before. Uh, so if you want to go to the right, you do add 3. All right. Reflecting, something you haven't probably done for a while. If I want to reflect something, what do, do I don't, I don't add something to it. What do I do? That's still doing something. So you have to change it to a negative. Multiply by negative 1. There you go. So when you're reflecting, you're multiplying by negative 1. If I multiply all my x things by negative 1, which axis do you think it flips over? The y axis. There you go. Okay. Now, last part is these are all matrices. Uh, and I can only add or subtract matrices if their dimensions are the same. Write that down. And this is very intuitive, just like you'd think. Try to fill in that first problem. Write down what the question marks are. Did you get 7, 10, and 17? Okay, now the other one. Did you get that? 
Okay. And now the last one. This is a multiply problem times by five. It's all pretty intuitive. And uh, the multiplication gets much harder tomorrow.